Breaking news, guys. Nigerians react. As Afina Fere said, Buhari, together with the former CBN governor, Emefele, laid foundation for current hardship and the economic crisis bedeviling Nigeria. Afina Fere, in a statement on Friday, said, the Buhari's regime did not make provisions for subsidies in the last budget, which led to hasty removal of first subsidy by the incumbent president on inauguration. Oh, really? <laughs> Welcome back to Prospect Janet TV. Thank you for this coming out here. If you are just joining us for the first time, I beg subscribe. Subscribe to this channel now. Please share this video. Let it go viral. Let Nigerians understand what is going on in the Nigerian political landscape. Thank you. Nigerians, this will shock you. The Yoruba Social Political Group, Afina Fere, has attributed the current economic works of Nigeria to the bad economic policies as begun by the former President Muhammad Buhari's administration. Afina Fere, in a statement on Friday, said the Buhari's regime did not make provisions for subsidies in the last budget which led to the hasty removal of first subsidy by the incumbent president on in inauguration. In a statement jointly signed by the publicity and organizing secretaries Jara, Jari Ajayi and Kule Omololu respectively, Afina Fere berated the last administration for creating economic holes for the present administration in, 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 the, in the country. The group, however, urged the state governors who are receiving almost double allocations due to the removal of subsidies and readjustment of exchange rates should deliver and ensure security of their people, not pursuing blame to the government at the center. The statement partly read, under Buhari's watch, terrorists and banditry were operating effortlessly, law and order broken down. Many innocent citizens, including the daughter of our leader, were killed or kidnapped. President Buhari could not rein in his critical officials like the then governor of CBN, Mr. Godwin Mefele, who was printing money rather than facing the reality of taking the difficult decisions which were postponed till the evil day. The Yoruba group said, a proof panel accused Godwin Emefele and his team of printing 22.7 trillion through ways and means and that the federal government was borrowing to pay salaries and pensions during the years of the Buhari administration. The group further claimed that under Buhari, some ministers had suggested the removal of subsidies, among other economic decisions, but did not agree until his last year in office to lay a, a bobby trap for the incoming administration. It was therefore obvious that we were simply postponing the evil day. The CBN governor denied leaks flying around that the books were being doctored. He reassured the Federation that all were well. He even wanted to contest the presidential election. There were no penalties. There were no penalties for his infrastructures by President Buhari. These inactions and false lives of false lives continued till May 29, 2023, when the new Hesman, Ashiwe Ahmed Tinubu was sworn in as president. President Tinubu wasted no time amending his inauguration address and declaring the subsidy regime over. This was obvious as there were no appropriation for subsidy from June 2023. He quickly followed up with the, the, re, the regulation of the forest regime which resulted in the free fall of the Naira. A man who is not shy about making difficult decisions probably underestimated the capability and the cap capacity of the beneficiaries of the old order to make things ungovernable 
for his administration. Afina Ferris suggested a vibrant ministry of information to uh, regularly stay in touch with the people to explain on the government plans and programs to address the economic and security situations in the country. They called for the reglement of the National Assembly budget and the launch of operations to go back to the people by the legislators, and each member must take politics back to the constituency. The governors receiving almost double allocations due to the removal of subsidies and readjustment of exchange rates should deliver to their people. The allocations of each state of the federation should be published monthly. Implementation of Operation Grow What We Eat and Eat What We Grow policy make banditry, kidnapping, and terrorism capital offenses punishable by death. Return to true and physical federalism with state police for which we commend the president and governor's endorsement and state ownership of minerals resources. This is not the time for some leaders, statesmen to make incendiary comments that can put our unity in jeopardy. Rather, it is a time to deepen peaceful coexistence to navigate through our current challenges. Orchestrating anarchy will be resisted in our dear nation. We fought with our blood to achieve democracy. We will also vigorously defend it as it is here to stay, the group said. Okay now. Okay now. And Buhari should also be prosecuted along with Emefele now. It was actually designed by uh, Obasanjo, then Kulok Jonathan laid the foundation and Buhari built the structure. Tunubu is now very busy on the fishing. By the time Tunubu complete the fishing, then there will be no more Nigeria. Hmm. I don't know why we keep on complaining, no. Tinubu did not say he's overwhelmed with the problem because he was aware of the problem before he came. He said it is time we deal with it. Tribalism will never let us to see road. May God save Nigeria. I better make a drop on for you. What's your take on this? Kindly share your thoughts below the comment section. Thank you.